For the record, I decided the topics and the questions in each topic. I can assure you, none of the questions has been shared with the commission or the two candidates. This debate is being conducted under health and safety protocols designed by the Cleveland Clinic, which is serving as the health security advisor to the commission for all four debates. As a precaution, both campaigns have agreed the candidates will not shake hands at the beginning of tonight's debate. The audience here in the hall has promised to remain silent. No cheers, no boos or other interruptions, so we, and more importantly you, can focus on what the candidates have to say. No noise except right now, as we welcome the Republican nominee, President Trump, and the Democratic nominee, Vice President Biden. How you doing, man? How are you? I'm well. Gentlemen, a lot of... ...been waiting for this night, so let's get going. Our first subject is the Supreme Court. President Trump, you nominated Amy Coney Barrett over the weekend to succeed the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the court. You say the Constitution is clear about your obligation and the Senate's to consider a nominee to the court. Vice President Biden, you say that this is an effort by the President and Republicans to jam through an appointment and what you call an abuse of power. My first question to both of you tonight, why are you right? Actually, the question should be for me, so I'm going to pause this. Um, Amy Coney Barrett is an extreme Catholic. She's not just a regular Catholic, Catholic, she is a mystical Catholic, which means she believes in speaking in tongues, which means um, speaking like speaking gibberish and then interpreting that because the Holy Spirit makes you speak gibberish. But then you know that you're speaking gibberish, but then you, if you're one of those people that believes in this, then somehow you don't ever fully realize that you're speaking gibberish because you think that you're speaking with the Holy Spirit, but really you're just making noises that are similar to the noises you've heard other people make. So Amy Coney Barrett has a serious problem about her. She can't see bullshit when it's coming out of her own mouth. Pardon me, I, I know I shouldn't cuss, but she can't. She believes in faith healing services where people go and lay hands on one another and heal one another with the Holy Spirit. And I'm just saying, I've been a part of that church and I got out fast. Amy Coney Barrett was in there for a long time. She didn't get out. So we can act like this problem with Amy, Amy Coney Barrett is about the Affordable Care Act or that it's about her being Catholic. But the problem is that she has shown in the past that she lacks the ability to notice crap when it's right in front of her face. So I don't, I don't know how Trump picked her. I'm very concerned about the Catholic Church's influence over the Trump campaign. And your opponent wrong. And where do you think a Justice Barrett would take the court? President Trump, in this first segment, you go first, two minutes. Thank you very much, Chris. I will tell you very simply, we won the election. Elections have consequences. We have the Senate. We have the White House. And we have a phenomenal nominee, respected by all, top, top academic, uh, good in every way, good in every way. In fact, uh, some of her biggest endorsers are very liberal people from Notre Dame and other places. So I think she's going to be fantastic. We have plenty of time, uh, even if we did it after the election itself. I have a lot of time after the election, as you know. So I think that uh, she will be outstanding. She's going to be uh, as good as anybody that has served on that court. We really feel that. Uh, we have a professor at Notre Dame, highly respected by all, said she's the single greatest student he's ever had. He's been a professor for a long time at a great school. And uh, we just, uh, we won the election, and therefore we have the right to choose her. And very few people knowingly would say otherwise. And by the way, the Democrats, 
they wouldn't even think about not doing it. If they had, the only difference is to try and do it faster. There's no way they would give it up. They had Merritt Garland, but the problem is they didn't have the election, so they were stopped. And probably that would happen in reverse also. Definitely would happen in reverse. So we won the election, and we have the right to do it, Chris. President Trump, thank you. Um, same question to you, Vice President Biden. You have two minutes. Well, first of all, um, thank you for doing this and looking thank forward you. to this, Mr. President. Thank you, Joe. I, uh, the American people have a right to have a say in who the Supreme Court nominee is. And that say occurs when they vote for a United States senators and when they vote for the president of the United States. They're not going to get that chance now because we're in the middle of an election already. The election has already started. Tens of thousands of people have already voted. And so the thing that should happen is we should wait. We should wait and see what the outcome of this election is, because that's the only way the American people get to express their view is by who they elect as president and who they elect as vice president. Now, what's at stake here is the president's made it clear he wants to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. He's been running on that. He ran on that. And he's been governing on that. He's in the Supreme Court right now trying to get rid of uh, the, uh, the Affordable Care Act, which uh, will strip 20 million people from having insurance, health insurance now, if it, if they, if it goes into court. And, and uh, the justice, and I have nothing, I'm not opposed to the justice. She seems like a very fine person. But she's written before she went on the bench, which is her right, that she thinks that the Affordable Care Act is not constitutional. The other thing that's on the court, and if, if, if it's struck down, what happens? Women's rights are fundamentally changed. Once again, a woman could be held, pay more money because she has a pre-existing condition of pregnancy. We were able to, they were able to charge a woman more for the same exact procedure a man did, gets. And that ended when we, in fact, passed the Affordable Care Act. And there's 100 million people who have pre-existing conditions, and they'll be taken away as well. All right. Dude, I'm falling asleep over here. Here's the problem. You have no problem with putting a religious nut, pardon me, on the Supreme Court. And you apparently don't want to even talk about Brett Kavanaugh right now, because I'm sitting here going, all right, um, you're talking about the Supreme Court without talking about Brett Kavanaugh? Because that should be a fight you want to take that guy should be impeached, but apparently no one cares. Why? Because he's from the same Catholic Washington, D.C. community as you? The same one as Amy Coney Barrett? I mean, no, she was only there for a while. She left. She's, she's primarily from Notre Dame. But, all right, let's... Here it goes again. Those pre-existing conditions, the insurance companies are going to love this. And so it's just not appropriate to do this before this election. If he wins the election... All right, just to be straight about this, we can talk about what's appropriate and yada, 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 but Trump's gonna do whatever he's gonna do, and what he's gonna do is push through his nominee no matter what, and I, I think we have to accept it, and uh, I think that we should be fighting Trump's, can't, Trump's presidency completely. Like, actually talk about the, the, the problem of what the American intelligence communities found out, found out about Trump, and what my people know about him, which is um, he's a serious national security risk. But hey, let's let's be boring. And the Senate is Democrat or Republican. Then it, he goes forward. If not, we should wait until February. All right. There aren't 100 million people with pre-existing conditions. As far as a say is concerned, the people already had their say. They. OK, Justice Ginsburg said very powerfully, very strongly at some point. 10 years ago or so, she said a president and the Senate is elected for a period of time. But a president's elected for four years. We're not elected for three years. I'm not elected for three years. So we have the Senate. We have a president. He's elected to the next During election. that period of time, during that period of time, we have an opening. I'm not elected for three years. I'm elected for four years. The and the 100 million started. people, Joe, the 100 million people is totally wrong. I don't know where you got that number. The bigger problem that you have is that you're going to extinguish 180 million people with their private health care, that they're very That's happy That's simply with. not true. Well, you're that certainly going that. to socialists. You're ahead. going to this socialist is, this is, we're, we're now into, gentlemen, we're now into open discussion. Open discussion. Open discussion. Yes, I agree. Go ahead, Vice President. Number Biden. one, uh, he, 
he knows that uh, what I proposed. What I proposed is that uh, we expand Obamacare and we increase it. We do not wipe any. And one of the big debates we had with 23 of my colleagues trying to win the nomination that I won were saying that Biden wanted to allow people to have private insurance still. They can. They do. They will under my proposal. It's not what you've said, but and it's not what your party is, has said. That is simply Your party a lie. doesn't say it. Your party that wants to go socialist my medicine party is and me. socialist right health care. Right now, I am the Democratic And they're going to dominate party. you, Joe. You know that. I am the Democratic Party right now. The platform of the Democratic Party Harris. is what I, in fact, approved of. What I approved of. Now, here's the deal. The deal is that it's going to wipe out pre-existing conditions. And by the way, the 20... All right. This is probably getting good. I'm going to keep going. The 200 million, the 200,000 people that have died on his watch, they're, how many of those have survived? Well, there's 7 million people that contracted COVID. What does it mean for them going forward if you... All right. All right. First of all, COVID-19 is not Trump's fault. And what we should blame Trump for is for letting COVID-19 spread to so many corners of the United States so it's difficult to find. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you keep talking. If you strike down the Affordable Care Act. And Joe, you've had 308,000 military people dying because you couldn't provide them proper health care in the military. So don't tell me I'm about this. I'm happy to talk about this. And if you were here, you, Look, it wouldn't be deal. 200. It would be 2 million people because you were very late on the draw. You late didn't want me to draw. ban China, which was heavily infected. You didn't want me to ban All right, we're, gentlemen, we're, 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 All right, all right. First of all, China actually beat COVID-19. More than anything, though, what I want to talk about is how neither of your plans do enough to change health care because the prices keep skyrocketing. And who's making money right now? Who's making money? Does anybody know? Trump knows. All your buddies on Wall Street. Somehow they're getting super rich right now while a lot of people are losing their jobs. People can't afford to survive right now. So. We need someone that's going to come in there and be able to make deals. And honestly, I don't know who that is. Um, hopefully that's going to be... <laughs> all right, that's a bad way to debate. But all right. So what I'm trying to say is Biden doesn't have a public option. Not that, not that I know of. He wants to expand Obamacare, which Obamacare made some people that don't have anything to do with health care. All they are, all they do for a living is work at hedge funds. They got so rich off of Obamacare, and that's basically the they got rich off the government. And Biden, in my opinion, took some bribes, which everyone did, because the healthcare industry is always bribing people into believing what they believe, which is that a public option is stupid. But in my opinion, what's stupid is the government spending a trillion dollars that's going to end up in the hands of bankers who are betting on Washington, D.C., Paying healthcare companies a lot of money. So, all right. Mr. Mr. President, you would have been much later, Joe. Mr. President, much later. Mr. President, you're talking about two million people. You're Mr. Not Mr. President, as a moderator, <laughs> we are going to talk about COVID in the next segment. But, but go ahead. Let me finish. The point is that the president also is opposed to Roe v. Wade. That's on the ballot as well in the court. In the court, and so that's also at stake right now. And so the election is all. You don't know it's begun. on the ballot. I, Why is it in the ballot? Because, because Why is it on the ballot? It's not on the ballot. It's on the ballot in the I court. I don't think so. In the court. Well, There's nothing happening there. Donald, would you and just And you don't know her me? view on Roe v. Wade. You I don't, don't know her know. view. Well, all right. Let's, all right. Let's talk. I would, we got a lot to unpack here, gentlemen. We got a lot of time. So <laughs> uh, on health care. And then we'll come back to Roe v. Wade. All right. Mr. President, the Supreme Court will hear a case a week after the election in which the Trump administration, along with 18 state attorneys general, are seeking to overturn That's right. Obamacare, to end Obamacare. You have spent the last... Because they want to give good health care. If I may ask right. my question, sir. Good health care. Over uh, the last four years, you have promised to repeal and replace Obamacare, but you have never in these four years come up with a plan, a comprehensive plan yes, to I replace have. Obamacare. Of course I have. 
Well, I'll I give got you rid an, of the I'm individual gonna, finish, mandate. I'm give you an Excuse me. I got I, rid of the individual mandate, which was a big is not chunk a of a comprehensive plan. That is ab- okay. You got rid of the individual mandate, and what happened is you made it so that the insurance companies can't stay in business without kicking people out that have pre-existing conditions. But then you go, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that uh, people with pre-existing conditions are protected by uh, president's order. But then you got rid of the individual mandate. So I mean. I I don't understand, like, it's like you're doing opposites at the same time, so... Is absolutely a big thing. That was the worst part of Obamacare. Chris, that was the worst part of Obamacare. Let me ask my question. Well, I'll I'll ask Joe. The individual mandate was the most unpopular aspect of Obamacare. I got rid of it. And we will protect people with pre-existing I'm the moderator of this debate, and I would like you to let me ask my question, and then you can answer your question. Go ahead, Trent. 